Welcome back to another episode of Psych Cosmos. Today we have Dexter Nathan, an author and a spiritual guru. He's going to give us some more information. Stay tuned for more. It, it, it seems like you're, you have YouTube videos on your channel that are about meditation practices um, and, and different uh, types of um, personal practices that you have in your lifestyle. Is that correct? Sure. Uh, hello, uh, everybody. Uh, good day, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Dexter Nathan. Uh, pretty much, uh, yeah, just uh, it's a good outlet for me. Uh, the YouTube is, uh, should I say, infested with uh, a lot of uh, people who are more into uh, their monetary gains. For me, it's more... I don't really care. For me, it's a sense of uh, I don't care how many v- viewers I receive or whatever. But uh, for me, even if one person gives me a genuine uh, compliment, I feel uh, I connected with somebody, you know. And, uh, you know, sometimes you got to be very circumspect. Uh, you can't say everything because, you you know, you're talking to the world. And uh, so you got to be circumspect and uh, meaning... Uh, People could get offended. People, uh, I mean, it's a it's a crazy world to put it uh, bluntly. You know, people have different uh, ideas, beliefs. People feel uh, too uh, liberal to a- attack or make uh, malicious comments on uh, YouTube. So it's interested with all kinds of people uh, because uh, it's it's like you can hide behind the internet. People who are hesitant to say stuff openly, uh, they create an ID, come out, and uh, they will deliver you with a punch below the belt, you know. And uh, it's just uh, so got to be careful at the same time. Uh, I don't mince my words, uh, I just say hate the way it is, uh, which is not a good uh, trait. Uh, see, that just uh, can get you into unwanted, it can create uh, unpleasantness. Look at people who have very large uh, viewership uh, and, you know, in the millions. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not about the content or the quality. It's just about how they tap into uh, a certain segment of the market, which would be totally uh, useless. I mean, contributing nothing to the society. Uh, regardless, they know what to do. Money rules the world, you know, everything. You know, be it politics or anything behind it, it's always money. And the people who control the flow of money rule the world. The the masses, the people are very, uh, what's the word, Uh, ill-informed, very delusional. They think uh, leaders of the different uh, countries rule the world. Yeah, but the leaders are puppets to the financial establishment, you know. Mm -hmm. People don't realize it. Oh, uh, yeah. To me, what I do has to be self-fulfilling, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, money, if it if I'm if it's meant to come, it will come. But uh, you don't want to pander into something to make money alone. That's not uh, my approach to life. The world, uh, the way it it's going, like fifty years from now, I'm not going to be around. But the world is going to be a. Uh, uh, Ethnicity of the world at large will take a different picture. I'm estimating 50 years, but it seems like it's a- happening right in front of my eyes. You know, I have no reservation whatsoever. The world, I consider myself a citizen of the world as opposed to confining myself to a country, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but I also have the view people who migrate should integrate into the society. In- no, and uh, if I come into your house and uh, you give me a place to live, I should uh, I should be appreciative, and I have to play by the rules. I don't come into your house and tomorrow I I I, I shouldn't be asking you to change the layout or change the wall picture because right it just uh, that's the way I look at it. You know, people uh, who are moving into the West should. Uh, if you're not, if you disagree, if you don't like a certain way of life, I don't think uh, it's right for you to move into that part of the world. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you have to 
you have to, I mean, sometimes uh, people move to different parts of the world simply for, simply only for one thing. They want to do well in life, which is great. But then if you, if you vehemently disagree about everything, the lifestyle, I mean, there are pros and cons, but then if you disagree about everything, then it cannot be your home, you know. Mm-hmm, you, mm-hmm. Wherever you move, you have to make it your home and uh, as, assimilate into the society and be uh, integral. And uh, at least if you cannot uh, contribute in a constructive way, uh, do, not, uh, do not have any uh, malice in your heart. Do not have, uh, you know, just have an open mind, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody is different. I yeah. just uh, you cannot change the world. Uh, live and let live. Be yeah. respectful. You know yeah. that's uh, my humble view. That was a very powerful introduction, uh, and you covered oh, a lot you. of you. Yeah, you covered a lot of great topics, and um, and what uh, what I kind of want to move in and segue more into is if you could tell us more about yourself, uh, maybe more about your spirituality or uh, any personal health practices that you have or anything. Any kind of powerful messages that you want to say? I'm not, I'm from the other side of Atlantic, so to speak. Where I grew up, it was uh, predominantly uh, English speaking uh, uh, descendants of uh, Portuguese, Dutch, and uh, uh, I guess a uh, few British. And uh, so they integrated with the native population and they were known as burghers. And it's a Dutch term indicating someone who lives in a foreign land. Gotcha. Okay. So that community was known as Burgers. And I, I grew up with them. So I guess uh, English was uh, a dominant language. And uh, I also spoke uh, the two native tongues that I picked up uh, during my early years. Uh, but uh, English was, uh, you know, it's just any part of this colonial countries. Uh, uh, I suppose it's the same with uh, the other colonies uh, ruled by once ruled by French but this is English uh, colonies there is a mindset among the natives uh, if you don't speak English well you don't uh, you're below below the standard you're not so English was like the language of the elite so you know it's they were like class conscious you know if you speak good English oh you are as they would say uh, we would say elite in this part of the world, they would say, oh, aristocracy, you know, that's the British term, right? Mm-hmm. I just wanted to come to US and uh, so I, but then it didn't happen. I ended up uh, coming over to Canada. Ever since then, I'm here. Uh, worked in Canada for the, for a while and uh, I mean, uh, uh, different jobs for the longest uh, duration. I was, I was, I was working in the Ontario court system. Uh, I used to be the First, I was a courtroom clerk, and then I went to the Superior Court of Ontario as a courtroom registrar, uh, something that I enjoyed. And uh, and at some point, uh, I made a lateral movement, uh, but in hindsight, it was, uh, it was a mistake. I wanted to go to the private sector. Mm. Uh, I didn't do well in the private sector. I worked in places like IBM and mm-hmm. Bell, uh, Bell Canada and so on. But uh, for the most part, languishing, and uh, I didn't progress too well. Uh, and then at some point, uh, uh, writing was my penchant and uh, I always, it was my dream from childhood. I said, I want to, I mean, to my, I, I didn't go out and talk about it, but it was a thought within me. I wanted to write a book, but mm. what would I write about? I have no, mit- you know, you need uh, content, you need, uh, but this desire to see my thoughts in writing was a very strong one. And I, at one point I thought, why not write a book? book about what I'm thinking. Mm. So what am I going to write? I'm going to write about the people I met in life. Mm. <laughs> right? Yeah. And then uh, interesting people, you know, mm. remarkable. So it's all a recollection of different characters that I ran into in my life. So who struck me as very remarkable. But instead of writing different stories, I brought them in one story, as though these people belong to one society. Yeah, show us the book. Let's see it. So there's there's the book, Long Awaited Dawn. I love it. So if anybody at home is interested in a a nice story, um, go ahead and check out Dexter's book because it it looks pretty interesting. Yeah, it's fairly uh, 
thick book how many pages it has like uh i guess it says 568 pages wow that's a big book which is fairly a big book for a uh, aspiring writer and uh, one of the things they say with new writers they have a standard template your book has to be three, you know about 350 pages mm-hmm. unless you're a well established writer right right, right. Yeah. if you're tall star you can write uh, 1200 1400 pages yeah. but someone who is just uh, trying to foray into the writing of uh, uh industry or the publishing industry that uh, i was told by publishers uh, you know you need to change and uh, see it's always the first crack at the nut mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and uh, see hurdles will be on your way when you're venturing into something but once you are there once you make your mark they'll come and knock on your door you're not going looking for them wow. and see john grisham the famous crime uh, thriller the writer uh, at one point said my books are my becoming really bad because uh, i don't know they just give me a deadline 3 months and uh, they give checks after checks this is for your second book this is for your fifth book this is for your fourth book so i have to create stories within deadline they give and uh, so that's what happens uh, the same john grisham when he wrote the first book nobody wanted to look at uh, Uh, his manuscript finally self published it and uh, at that time i think this was back in 1988 computer was in the early stages and uh, there was a program called word perfect and he put it in word perfect and and uh, took it to a a printer and bound it and went around uh, like a pan handler selling uh, copies uh, that's the history and finally he sold 5 500 copies in schools and malls and went back to the same uh, the publisher who rejected and said i already sold 500 copies oh really leave it with us and we'll take a look and that rest was history no looking back yeah. so it happens to everybody and uh, so that's uh, there is nothing to uh, you know there's no point holding any resentment or grievances about it Agreed, that's yeah. the way the world operates you know yeah. when when you are recognized everybody comes to you if you're not you are in the oblivion right. so it just uh, you know it just uh, some stroke of luck something works you make it and uh, a good good deal of it uh, goes to your hard work too you know mm-hmm. uh, your determination and uh, but uh, there are a lot of people who are determined and working hard all their life and who don't see the day of the light you know yeah. or the light of the day i'm sorry right 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 you, yeah you really uh, lay out the build up to writing your book um beautifully um because you get to a point where you say that you're writing um to sort things out mm. like you got to a point where you're like i need to sort this out and i feel like uh, young people today don't do enough writing right and i and i like your story of staying motivated and staying driven um because that's a big thing that we like to talk about on our channel on youtube is uh to motivate people to accomplish their dreams and you it's like you said you didn't really even talk about it much but you always really wanted to be a writer and then you ended up writing a book and just the fact that you were able to accomplish that is a really big deal so thank you for sharing uh that part of your story that's really awesome i I I kind of wanted to uh segue. I I love the statues that you have behind you. Um yeah, do you want to talk a little bit about um the the reason that I reached out to you was because you had a video on meditation and it seemed really interesting to me. Did you want to share anything uh on that before uh before we let you go here shortly? I don't consider myself uh religious by any means. Uh to me, uh we can only think rationalize uh, uh deduce everything within our human terms mm. but our human capacity is very limited mm-hmm. right uh we are we are an evolving species who knows a millennium down the road we might understand little more than we could now right uh so first thing is to be brutally honest that uh, we don't understand everything but we try to uh, speculate on things that we cannot understand mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right often it's a neurotic speculation uh, because see we we only think in human terms okay you have uh, let's say 
you have something, a merchandise, a computer or a phone. And if somebody says, oh, this phone, how did it come here? Who, uh, no, it just appeared from nowhere. We don't know. Uh, no, someone must have brought it here. No, no, it just appeared. So someone must have made it. No, it appeared by itself. Nobody made it. Mm. So in human terms, it doesn't make sense. If there's something, there has to be, uh, there has to be someone who is behind it. Mm. Right? So this is the human rationale. Mm. People want something greater because it appeals to their insecurities. Mm. Right? Mm. End of the day, no matter how great what you achieve, there is a human insecurity. You can be the richest person in the world. You can be the most powerful man. But if you come down with an illness, incurable, like a, a you know, heart, a stroke, whatever, you know, you are, you don't know. And mm. you may be an atheist. You may, you may vehemently deny the existence of a supernatural being. But when you feel helpless, your money doesn't help, your, the power you are wielding doesn't help, then you look up to something unknown. Oh, there is a God. Mm. That is a human security, mm. right? In my humble view, the way I look at it, macro aspect and micro aspect. Mm -hmm. if, you, if, you, if, you if you consider your city a macro aspect of your, your area, the my, micro aspect, then the ma macro would be the country. If you can take your country as a micro, the world would be the macro, right? Mm -hmm. If you take the planet as micro, then the planet planetary system would be the ma macro cosmic system. Mm -hmm. So we, if you take the human body as a macro aspect, every molecule in your body is a micro aspect, your, your every atom. Take that, treat yourself as a micro atom, a tiny molecule. This whole cosmos is the macro aspect mm -hmm. of it. Right, right, right. What out there is out here, mm -hmm. right? And the mysteries of human body is not yet discovered fully and completely by the medical science. The mysteries of the cosmos is not yet discovered by scientists either. Mm -hmm. right? The form changes, but the matter doesn't change. We become ashes, then we become, we become carbon, nitrogen, nitrogen, whatever, part of the earth, right? Change of form. It's like Dalton's theory in chemistry in grade 10, they teach you this, right? Mm -hmm. But if the form doesn't change, what happens to this animating force that's doing all the thinking, right. speaking, and talking, and right. communicating? Where is it going? Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, it becomes part of the cosmos. Okay, but then... Using the same thing, mind, and if you can control this mind, which is almost next to impossible, if you you have something called the will, you know, you want to do something, the mind always opposes the will. You tell your mind to do this, the mind will always fight back, mm. right? And you, if you, if your will is so strong, you can go only so far, and you will achieve success or whatever because it's your will. The mind uh, will not listen to you. But there's one thing. You may not listen to anybody in your life. But there's one thing you always listen throughout your life. It's your mind. That's right. right. If, you can, if you're able to tell your mind with your will, hey, be quiet now, be still. The mind listens, then it's meditation. When that happens, you're connecting with a frequency in the outer space. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. This is, uh, see... All these people, be it, uh, you know, the mystics, be it Jesus or Buddha and so on, I think people always struggle to articulate the uh, mysterious, mystical uh, force that they are able to connect with, right? Because it happens in a thoughtless realm. There's no thought. Mm. Every language happens in a thought realm. Mm -hmm. So it cannot be articulated in a realm that, there is no thought. It's an mm. experience. One has right. to, yeah. one has to experience it. And mm. if I, if you experience it and come to come, try to explain to me in a verbally using a language, I will never understand that. Right? I have to experience myself. I could be, I could be uh, entirely flawed, but this is what I've experienced. Uh, I don't think I can say it any better. Uh, well, yeah. I, I, then to conclude that one has to experience it rather than verbalizing it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and if I, you experience I, it, you'll know. You may not know how to 
how to explain it but mm-hmm. that experience is very unique to yourself yeah i think that was very very well said um and uh it was a really good explanation i like i like your perspective on it a lot um thank you for sharing that with us um why don't you tell everybody at home how they can find you or how they can follow you on your social media or your youtube or anything like that and you can always uh, look me up on my youtube uh, uh just uh, punch in dexter nathan it has become a very common name there are more than one dexter these days uh uh the last name is nathan uh and uh look me up on youtube i tend to upload uh, uh my thoughts uh for time to time and uh if you if you are if you are in, if you if you are able to uh see where i'm coming from and uh if you could uh share your views on what i have to say uh that would uh, that would be a great uh, i think uh, that 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 would be very fulfilling uh, and uh, that's what i'm looking for and uh i'm also an author uh, if you're interested in uh, a good uh, historical fiction uh look me up on uh uh amazon long awaited dawn uh i'm uh, I'm not the regular kind of author I'm a, the book was uh, it's not uh, I I didn't go through the regular publishing channel so there is no agents and no publisher I've uh, entered into a contract with Amazon now, so I'm not uh, I'm not monetarily gaining anything for me I want to get my word out and if I could uh, share my thoughts with the rest of the world to me uh, i think and if someone can uh, also see where i'm coming from i think i've uh, made my part of the contribution to during my lifetime so that's the more pe- people i can reach to and people uh, understand what i say that uh, that's all like yeah for the most part right and uh, i guess uh, that that would suffice Yeah, Dexter, that's great. Thank you for sharing your wisdom today. We really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Thank you and uh, I just want to I cannot thank you enough. Uh I mean wa- words fail uh to say my uh, how I feel about you guys and uh, this is and uh, this is amazing. Uh and uh, you know what? Uh it's just not a pleasure. It was a huge privilege to connecting with you guys. Hey, interestingly uh, and hey we want to thank you for joining us once again and uh you know um we hope that you take care and if you ever need anything please feel free to reach out it was a pleasure mm-hmm. wonderful thank you so much you guys are wonderful god bless you yeah th- thank you thank you thank you too god bless you too all right we'll we'll see you later see you soon yep thanks dexter